Listen up, everybody. Your fantasy football drafts are coming. It's time to show your league what puny and pathetic trash bags they truly are. The ultimate draft kit from the fantasy footballers is the easiest way to annihilate them. Tiered rankings, full projections, sleepers, breakouts, it's got it all. Go to ultimatedraftkit.com and secure yours immediately. I said do it now. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from Draft.com Studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, get to the chapel. There's a bomb. Get down. I like that. That was pretty good. <laughs> now you have to guess. Go ahead and comment on YouTube which one of the three of us did that impression. What impression? How dare you? <laughs> yeah, How dare you? I called the governor. He's and I said, "Hey, man, I'm retired, I'm, former governor. I'm glad. Uh, I." Well wishes on your recovery, because, you know, he had that health problem, an emergency surgery. He's good to go, and now he's ready for his fantasy football draft, because he pre-ordered the ultimate draft kit. <laughs> okay, all right. That That's not the only headline news our special guest opened the show. We actually have the NFL draft. Woo! Yes! Yes! Oh, my. I'm so sorry, but I have been so excited for this day to be upon us. Someone told me on YouTube to stop my my opening show screech, and I was like, "That is, yeah, I I wouldn't call it a screech. That right there, yeah, that was like a, it was a delightful, high volume, delicious screech, delicious screech. Mm, mm-hmm. It tasted good. All right, so the NFL draft, we're gonna finish our uh, rookie review, our rookie preview. We'll look at quarterbacks, uh, a couple tight ends. We also have our full uh, predictions." As far as the big names and where they go, we did this last year. Uh, it resulted in, I believe, Mike it, having to eat eggplant. And, the, and myself and Jason. Yeah. So I, I won, is you, what you're saying. Yes, correct. You won last year. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll do it again this year. Whoever wins gets to punish the losers, whether that's uh, with food or water is yet to be I seen. get to punish Josh Rosen? <laughs> oh Maybe. goodness Maybe. gracious we'll, gonna, get we'll have our predictions on the show today we also have some perfect marriages that'll be our quick question some perfect player team marriages and uh those, those will be on the show today what else is going on mike is wearing a ridiculous jersey what, on, do you, what do you mean on youtube how is it possibly ridiculous it's ridiculous because i know what it represents and it represents your abandonment of your entire uh, Childhood. livelihood your your fandom they abandoned. You're wearing a Kurt Cousins Vikings jersey. They abandoned me. How did they abandon you? By giving Sam Bradford forty million dollars. Ah, twenty million right now. Forty, possibly. No, it's possibly. Happening. Um, yeah. Now he he's, snuck in. This is my. This was, is my quarterback. He was not oh wearing gosh. this, and then right before we <laughs> pushed record to record the episode, we both look over and like, what? you wearing yeah. and i he's wearing a kirk cousins he spent money on this yeah you're darn right it's not even autographed it didn't even come from pristine auction uh, and it's, it's probably autographed it's, by you it's all right it's uh look it's my quarterback it's my dynasty quarterback i'm loving life right now i guess that is the way to live um you can find us on youtube you can check out that jersey you can find us on twitter at the ff ballers the website is the fantasy uh that's where you can get the ultimate draft kit you can also check us out on Patreon, our uh, listener community, jointhefoot.com. And, yeah, we're going to get right into it. We're going to start off with some uh, some wedding bells. I mean, some perfect marriages. I want to know, what is your perfect team player marriage for fantasy uh, during tonight's draft? Uh, Jason. <laughs> My vows would be said if you're talking perfection. If the New Orleans Saints traded up to get Josh Rosen, I think he's the best pure passer in the draft, has super high IQ, but needs an offensive coordinator that is just as smart, just as hardworking. I want Sean Payton and Josh Rosen, perfect marriage as the heir apparent to Drew Brees. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, you hate Josh Rosen like an idiot. But yes, that would be a perfect marriage. Who do you have, Andy? Uh, well. <laughs> I think Arizona and Baker Mayfield should walk down the aisle. I think they should find a way to make it happen. I I love the the marriage between Baker Mayfield and the Arizona Cardinals. You've got the uh, he can walk into this experience and this established offense around Larry Fitzgerald, David Johnson. Uh, I think he's the most mentally prepared quarterback coming into the draft. Fifth year senior out of Oklahoma had more responsibility in that lineup uh, or in that uh, offense than, than most quarterbacks do in college. I love Baker Mayfield to Arizona, and I'm biased and want him to go there. If Baker Mayfield somehow ended up on the Arizona Cardinals, You'll would you put different that different jersey? jersey on? I will I will gladly wear. All right, Mike, it's hey, your Baker. turn. Oh, hit the music. I'm shying away from the quarterback position since you guys both went with that. I'm going to a team that just cut there while he is aged and a very seasoned, heavily seasoned veteran wide receiver one, Jordy Nelson. The Green Bay Packers do have a need at the wide receiver position. Uh, you have Adams. That's great. I don't think Randall Cobb is the answer to be your wide receiver too. I would love to see Cortland Sutton get another big body in there for Aaron Rodgers. Just make your offense absolutely ludicrous when it comes to pass catchers. 6'3", almost 220. Fits the mold. Uh, can you? But can you imagine Adams and Sutton together with Hall of Fame Rodgers, Hall of Fame quarterback Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball? It would be sensational, and it would be great for fantasy. Do you think that the Packers will make it up to Aaron Rodgers for you know letting Jordy go without talking to him, for letting the quarterback coach go without talking to him? Do you think they'll put him in the draft room and he gets the call? <laughs> like he just get you get to make the first pick if you agree to sign your next contract at a slightly reduced value. If if what they have been doing is any indication. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> they will. It'll just they will be not. a phone. They'll give him a phone, but it won't be hooked up. Right. He'll be like, "Hello, <laughs> new phone. Uh, who did? Corlin Sutton. <laughs> Corlin Sutton. All right. Uh, well, there you go. Three perfect marriages. Not that I expect Mike's to last. It'll probably end in divorce, and I'll put on a jersey of somebody else. Uh, oh, yeah. Get bodied. <laughs> okay. Enjoy. Oh, we're getting back into it. Rookie review. Can you already taste the uh, the hot wings for tomorrow night? Hot I mean, wings, the sausage dip. It's all going in. <laughs> it's all going in. It's all going in. I, it's going to be so much fun. We're doing a, a little draft party here at the studio. Did anybody invite Brooks? Oh, oh crap. wait. I hope not. You guys are having a party? <laughs> oh, shoot. I mean, yeah. No. Giamatti wait, no. will be there. We just planned it. Yeah. <laughs> if you <laughs> want to. What um, a great idea, Brooks. <laughs> Yeah, well, cool. It's at the place down. Bellagio. We'll send you an address. <laughs> All right. Do uh, you guys want this quarterback drop, man? I, I feel like I'm overdropping the people right now. Yeah, drop it like it's hot. <laughs> Quarterbacks. Does this category even include Josh Rosen? Does he count as a? Okay. All right, You're Sam Darnold. I just, I just want to let the record show. Uh-huh. Who, this who won come, the prediction thing this last This will year. come back to bite you. I know. I know. That's the, pr the, <laughs> the prediction does not necessarily mean that those guys are good. That's true. To be fair. Just grasping here. <laughs> yes. Anything I can count for me in advance of Josh Rosen busting now, is uh, what I'm going to do. I'm trying to remember, since we talked about how you won, I think you ended up getting Watson to the Texans. I think that's what put you over the top, which was – crazy because you, you when you were projecting Watson there you weren't projecting them to actually move up and take him so it was incredible strike thanks of, Mike of good luck all right let's talk about some of the <laughs> I agree that's what it is <laughs> look you've got all these professionals out there and every two seconds the Browns are leaning right. leaning for and cooling off on this guy and heating up on this guy what's happening are they playing a game of Madden? Are they going through simulated seasons? They're just and saying, oh my gosh, we won more games with Baker Mayfield this year. Yeah, no, nothing is happening inside. It's just the media. It's it's like oh, we've got forty eight hours. We got twenty four hours left. We got to come up with a story. Sam Darnold. Let's start by talking about Sam Darnold. Potential fits for him. What do you guys think about him? What's the scouting report? What do you expect from Sam Darnold out of USC? Who? Uh, I, prolific freshman sophomore year. I mean, yeah, pretty much unmatched 
at the position to see a guy come in and do what he did. Sam Darnold is my favorite prospect this year. I think he's the number one quarterback. I don't necessarily think he has the highest ceiling of the bunch, but he has a good ceiling. I see him like a Matthew Stafford type of guy where he is he's got all the tools necessary it's a good comp in, including the the kind of the heart and the grit when you watch him play he was you know he didn't play early in his high school he was a basketball player he was uh you know a multi-sport guy and then he goes to USC and he wasn't set to be the starter when he went there and he just beat guys out which is kind of crazy when you consider that right now uh, everything we've seen from Sam, Dar Sam Darnold that's been so good, and he got a late start, my favorite thing about him is that he is 20 years old. That's that exactly is what I was going to bring so up. so young for a quarterback prospect of his level. So when you've got the height, you've got the arm, you've got the, the production, you've got everything, and then you're only 20 years old with limited work. He's a fit to uh, – that's a guy I'd like to sit, though. I'd like a, a player at that age to sit, not come in and have to take the reins of a team or rejuvenate a team, which he may have to do if he goes to Cleveland. He's going to be a guy that has to. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. He's Hugh Jackson has promised, has promised that Tyrod's going to start wink, wink, all yeah. 16. Well, I guess he's a guy I'd like to see sit in a good system. Donald will be in game four for the Browns. <laughs> you guys aren't giving Tyrod his, his due. No, 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 no. That's not at all. I like Tyrod. I think he's a good quarterback. But when you spend draft capital at the 101 on a quarterback these days, unless they're somehow the, unless the Browns end up 4-0, 5-0, you're putting the rookie in. That's just the way that it works because you will give in to the pressures of the fans, the ownership, the general manager will start unless you knocking win. at the door. Unless, unless, right. you, win. unless yeah. you win. What about the Giants? As, hey, the, as a quarterback what, for Darnold? That right. would be awesome. The Giants, for for that's a great situation to come into because maybe you start next year, you sit behind a Hall of Fame quarterback in Eli Manning, you have weapons in Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, I would I would. That seems like that. my favorite landing My, my spot. favorite thing that I've heard recently on Sam Darnold, uh, da Daniel Jeremiah was talking uh, to his – college coach you know what about the man what about the work ethic you know because that matters for these quarterbacks we've seen that uh, all sorts of top five picks that bust you know and flame out and and generally a lot of that goes to their work ethic and he was like well here's a perfect example from this week he said he went into his training facility at six in the morning and Sam Darnold was already there and he was working out with other people and he's like it's every day now like, this is life. This is every day. He's a quarterback every single day for his life. I love that work ethic from a 20-year-old. All right, let's talk about let's talk about Lamar Jackson, one of the more polarizing sure. prospects. Um, it seems like multiple times this offseason we've heard, oh, the NFL GMs, they're really, really liking Lamar Jackson. Oh, they're cooling on Lamar Jackson. Oh, they, they like him. You hear uh, specifically the Patriots. The, you know, it, it reports today their interest – in Lamar Jackson, it is legit. They've had a couple of workouts with Lamar Jackson. They have two picks in the first round. Um, I think that Lamar Jackson is an underrated prospect. I think that in today's NFL, when you look at what succeeds, is a quarterback that has the ability to do the run-pass option. And I don't mean that you have to execute it with Michael Vick-like skills, which Lamar Jackson, by the way, can do. But he's, I mean it he's in a me. much better passer than Michael Vick. That's I I don't want I think he is he has put up yeah I don't I don't know if I agree with that but he put up far better passing numbers than Michael Vick. My point is that a guy like Carson Wentz dominated the NFL last year by having the ability to run the run pass option. Lamar Jackson will break games open with his legs. He will learn as a quarterback. And if you have to put one linebacker on Lamar Jackson at all times, your odds of succeeding in the NFL go way up. Saw it with Deshaun Watson last year as well. Yeah, and, and even I just, just oh. the, the the actual numbers. So the highest passing college year for Michael Vick was under twenty one hundred yards. Now, look, I understand. Are you just talking about college production? Yes, that's a totally different discussion. Well, but when that's you say that he, when you say that Lamar Jackson is a much better passer than Michael Vick, I'm thinking about the scope of Vick's career, I, well, not just coming out of college. Oh, well, that's what I'm comparing him to. Right now, all we have right now are Lamar Jackson's college numbers. Two years, over 3,000 passing yards. Michael Vick didn't break 2,100 yards. Different so, game. 
yes, it it's it's different, but I don't necessarily buy into that the as the automatic comp. If you tell me that Lamar Jackson is going to be what Michael Vick was in the NFL, you'd be thrilled. You'd, you'd be, be absolutely thrilled. You'd be beyond yes. thrilled. I and mean, that is a, a, a great ceiling. Yeah, when it comes to fantasy football, Lamar Jackson has an edge on all these other guys. His yes. running game is another level. It's the best rushing prospect we've seen since Cam Newton came into the league. You know, everyone talks about how unfathomably great – Saquon Barkley is Lamar Jackson had more rushing yards than Saquon and then he also had the passing yards prolific you know stat provider he is a fantasy uh gold mine so he we're gonna want to watch where he goes I do doubt some of his skills like I love Lamar Jackson he's definitely a quarterback I think the accuracy is an issue and I've seen all the you know you, you calculate for drops and you right. do all these things but I'm just talking film I'm talking ah oh, man when he's He's not that accurate on the run, which you would think would be like his strong suit since he's such a, a, a runner. But I believe he's got a bright future. My biggest worry with him is just the fact that he is absolutely going to run the ball. No team is drafting him to not run him. And he's he's so thin. He reminds right. me of like Robert Griffin. And I don't think he's going to be able to take the hits on, at an NFL level with his body type. That's my biggest worry. So I think – early on, year one, he's probably going to have the most fantasy points. Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield had an illustrious career at Oklahoma after he transferred from Texas Tech and, and then redshirted. Uh, arguably the best Oklahoma quarterback in the last 20 years, depending on what you want to look at. He's my favorite quarterback. Um, I talked about the potential marriage with Arizona. I think anybody who gets Baker Mayfield is getting an NFL-level quarterback. Comparing him to Sam Darnold, he's a lot older. He's 23 years old. Um, what do you guys think about Baker? He's Baker is by far my favorite quarterback in the in the draft. Hyper accurate, 70 percent plus yeah. two years in a row. Hyper accurate. I think he is a. This is getting into narrative and character, but I think he will be a very strong leader. You just because that's that's a knock on Baker is his attitude. People think that this is going to be a problem. But on the field, he's a general. There was, uh, there's, there's a play. I, I can't remember where he throws the ball, but it turns into this huge, about a 70-yard yak or so. And then screaming down the back of the, of the footage, you see Baker Mayfield is running with the play because he, is, he wants to be a part of it. He wants to be a part of the celebration. He wants, he's going to get in there and block if he has to, which maybe I don't want my NFL quarterback doing that, but just saying. That represents his competitive yes, nature he wants to win and I don't think that his attitude is a problem and the accuracy is incredible this this was uh, uh from Graham Barfield uh, he tweeted out some percentages and I know there's there's tons and tons of numbers if you're on Twitter tons of percentage numbers going out especially this year because you have Baker who is such a, who is on the absolute top end of the spectrum and Josh Allen who's much lower and how do people want to analyze the accuracy but he, he tweeted out, he said, last season, 94% of all pass attempts in the NFL went between 0 and 19 yards down the field. 94% of them. Baker Mayfield completed 77% of those passes. By far the highest of the first-round graded quarterbacks. So that's sensational. Yeah, I, I like Baker Mayfield a lot. Not not quite as much as you do, Mike. He's not my number one. He's my number three. But I think this is a good year for quarterbacks. I really do think there's – you know five quarterbacks that could come out of this year and be NFL starters. Um, my worries that I have with, with Mayfield, yes, he is accurate. I don't care about the size, and he does have the arm strength, but my worries with him is just the fact that he's been in a system that has really set him up for success. It's it's made it things very easy. His offensive line has been perfect. There's been a lot of ease around him coming into that system, and so transitioning – I, I think he is NFL ready as far as his his body, but I don't know if he's NFL ready as far as his mind as much as you do, Andy, when well, that, it comes to the football. And that's the, why the I brought that up earlier is that there is, ordinarily in those type of offenses, and you're talking about the air raid at Oklahoma, normally in those type of offenses you have the Chip Kelly style, someone's holding up a placard on the sideline, and you're just executing the play. That is not what happened with Baker Mayfield at Oklahoma. He was giving much, he was given much more control. And if you go and listen to interviews with his coaches, 
They believe that he had more responsibility at the quarterback position than any other quarterback at, in college. And so that's what gives me the mental kind of, uh, I guess, encouragement on the Baker Mayfield side where I believe he can come in, um, learn a system, execute a system. But, but certainly all three but you're of us choosing, like Yeah, Baker. you're right. choosing you know, which guy you like the most. Well, and if you're talking about it, things are perfect for him. Well, when they're not, as in under pressure – from Pro Football Focus, under pressure, his pass rating was 111.6. He was the only one of these top prospects to have a rating higher than 100 when pressured. So even when things are bad for Baker Mayfield, he is great. Numbers are fun, aren't they? Yeah, especially you know when they make your point. <laughs> Before I jump into Josh Rose and Josh Allen, the Joshes. Oh, one, one I like, one I hate, one jo Jason likes, one he hates. Before we get into the Joshes, I do want to pause for a second and remind you that uh, if you pre-order the Ultimate Draft Kit, you're going to get – this is the pre-draft analysis. You're going to get the post-draft ranking. So after these players find their match, find their marriage, find their team, you're going to get the rookie rankings right away in the Ultimate Draft Kit. Even though the full UDK doesn't come out until June 1st, by pre-ordering it, you're going to get early access to the rookie rankings at all the positions. So you're ready for your dynasty drafts, your rookie drafts. Whatever the case may be, you can learn all about the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. And like I said, the cheapest possible price is going to be right now if you order it between now and June 1st. So check it out, ultimatedraftkit.com. You will not regret it. I promise you that. We want to thank Fantasy Champs for sponsoring today's show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where you need to go. The only place you need to go to get your fantasy football hardware. And speaking of getting ready for next year, get a the, the draft boards, they're available for pre-sale. Get that out of the way. You know, I don't want to think about that nonsense when it's when I'm trying to plan the draft. I want to be ready. The board is ordered. It's going to be on the way. And make sure you pick up a trophy for last year, a ring. Celebrate those victories because that's what fantasy football is really all about. Celebrating. Let everyone else know, like Arnold said, what trash bags they truly are. That's important. And how great you are. You yeah. gotta shine. rub their noses. You in gotta it. shine. You gotta shine like a diamond. So head over to fantasychamps.com. Use a promo code Ballers and you save a little, save a little bit of cash. I mean, what is the point of winning a fantasy football championship if it's not to make you better than them? If it's not to prove it's fair. that it, you're better, you than are them. you are greater sign Mike. Everyone I'm else. greater sign Mike. <sighs> All right, I'm Josh. Greater sign you two. Josh and Josh. Let's talk about the, the two 21-year-old prospects. Uh, we've heard, uh, a, I think, a wider range of opinion about Josh Allen than we have Josh Rosen. Although there is still, uh, there are still people on both sides of of both of these guys. Let's start with Rosen. As much as I like having fun with my disparaging remarks about Josh Rosen, he's a first-round prospect in the NFL. I have questions about. Um, I, I see both sides of it. I see the balancing act of, look, he did a lot with a little at UCLA. They didn't have a lot of talent around him. He took a bunch of hits. Um, his size is great. He completed throws at a, at, at a pretty good percentage. I'm not sure I, I love the makeup of this specific Pac-12 quarterback mentally. Um, he obviously believes that he's going to be a great next-level quarterback and the best of the best. I know you love him, Jason, so tell, tell tell the people why you are on board with Josh Rosen. Here's why I like Josh Rosen. When you watch the and film... And it can't be the neckbeard. That can't be no, the only... No, When you watch the film, he looks like an NFL quarterback. He throws not only... And I'm not talking the form, uh, which is is you know perfect. He's got like the, the quintessential way you throw the ball. That's all great, but I'm speaking of he throws with anticipation. He throws guys open. He does things that you have to do in the NFL that you don't always see in college, so I know that's there. He ran more of a, you know the type of system that you know what's going to translate. He has always been one of those higher-ranked prospects, and then he's come in and he's proven it. He has... He has shown. So then you go, okay, so everything on field is great. The concerns here are off field. And one of the biggest concerns that people have is the ego and the, you know, the IQ problems. I've literally heard a negative be that he's too smart. I want my quarterbacks to have a high IQ. I want them to be smart. I want them to disagree and discuss and say, why is this happening? Like, I think those are good traits. It does mean that he needs to go to the right team. I don't think he can just go absolutely anywhere. That's why I picked him for my marriage candidate earlier in the episode. But 
he he has the highest ceiling to me. If he mm-hmm. goes to the right offensive coordinator who can get the most out of his brain when he's got the physical tools and the mental tools, I think it it all comes together. There are some injury concerns, but you know, I I see him as a as a you know a, a long time NFL starter. Mike, uh, any thoughts on Rosen? I'm definitely in between you guys on Josh Rosen. I don't love him as much as Jason does. I think if any of the quarterbacks have a chance to fall in the draft, I agree with the sentiment that it would be Josh Rosen. He's not going to fall too far because eventually someone will will trade up and grab him. But I think that he projects out from what I have watched, breaking down his numbers and his film, he does project as a competent starter. In the I think he could end up Matt Castle level. <laughs> I do. I, I I do, Jay. I think I, you can look, get there. I think I, you get to Matt Castle. You're saying that Matt Castle got a free agent Matt, contract at one point. In Matt time. Castle Patriots or Matt Castle Chiefs? Yeah, good question. Good question. Well, not Patriots. Hmm. Josh Allen, the other Josh here, out of Wyoming. Um, by the way, Mountain West Conference for all yes. you listening out there. I guess apparently I said Midwest. Hey, it's, it's the these MW. Things, these things happen. I mean, it's, uh, the, Mike, it's, it's the Mike the, Wright conference. Yeah. Look, Josh Allen, to me, you, you talk about ceiling. He's my high ceiling guy. Uh, best physical tools. He can at, he can hit any ceiling with the football. He can hit any football. ceiling with the football. I won't argue with that. Did you see the uh, quick detour here? Did you see the uh, Red Bull prank with Jared Goff? No. They had Jared Goff go out um, to a, uh, what do you call, a, an undergrad college, like one of the um, sure. transfer schools. And they... He came in as a transfer, all this long hair, neck tattoos, and works out with the team. And the other two quarterbacks are pissed. So mad that they're bringing this transfer in. And this guy comes out there and he's just. And did he ball out? Fireballing. <laughs> you know, he's 70 yards down the field. Throwing him over to the mountains. People's faces are going, what on earth? Oh, my goodness, you know. And he's getting mad at every receiver for not catching up to it and all this. Stuff. It was really funny. Um, Josh Allen. Uh, I've, I've said it. I like him. He's my second-ranked uh, rookie quarterback. To get to that ceiling, he may need a couple ladders. I mean, it's going to take a little bit of time. But I don't. when I look at the accuracy concerns, I saw a player that does what Cam Newton often does. Cam Newton in the NFL is still an inaccurate quarterback at times, and I'm not projecting uh, Allen to never be accurate. I'm just saying he misses the swing pass because he throws it too hard. He had a lot of drops from these – uh, you know, a mid-major uh, wide receivers. And I think he suffered from that. And you're talking about a guy that probably belongs in the 60, 62% range. And I'm happy with a guy coming out of college like that with those physical tools. I see him and that speed athleticism to be a Carson Wentz type of player. And I think he's going to have a lot of success with the right team and the right opportunity. So I'm a big Josh Allen fan. If Arizona ended up with him, I'd be quite happy. Yeah, see, there's a difference to me of like if Arizona – you know, got him at 15. It didn't have to pay extra capital. Uh, I would like that because I agree with your uh, ceiling assessment. This guy's a freak. He's got all, I mean, he's got the strongest arm that I can remember seeing of any prospect I've ever looked at. And when you watch him play and you watch film, you see a lot of stuff you like, but the accuracy problems are legitimate. Now, I think there's more to him than say a Paxton Lynch, a big, strong guy that, you know, he's just, He's just physically strong. He's not a good football player. He's a good football player. But the act in the NFL, you have to have accuracy. And that's that's my issue is will he be accurate enough? He to me projects to be a project that could absolutely be uh, a, you know, a great quarterback or could be a complete bust. I do, I hope that whatever team your team is out there does not trade up to land him because that could still work out. But I just I'm playing the odds, and I think that if you pay extra capital for a guy that's a project, he's not going to come in week one and be a prolific NFL quarterback. I feel I feel like your love for Rashad Penny it, it kind of contradicts your hatred for Josh Allen because they both played at lower level. Oh, I opportunities. Well, one Rashad of Penny's had, prolific yeah. numbers are all. A Penny, result of Penny. But he had prolific yeah, numbers. Exactly. Josh Penny Allen does prolific numbers. Josh Allen does not. You compare Josh Allen to the numbers of the Carson Wentz or the Big Ben or the guys who came from smaller conferences, they're not really right. comparable. Yeah, I mean, Carson Wentz was, last I looked, he was an over 3,000-yard passer. His- Carson Wentz is not the player who's 
collegiate numbers you want to compare Josh Allen to. Fair. It won't make you feel good. He's, <laughs> I think he was a 72% passer, Carson Wentz was. No, uh, his, that's for the, his that's first couple hurdle. years, but that what was a What you attempt. want is you want, you want to make the very arbitrary, subjective Dan Marino comparisons. That's what you want. You want to make the comparisons just blindly taking the accuracy right. numbers. And, uh, you know, it's just how much you weigh it. Uh, on film, I see the best, maybe the best quarterback in the draft. Uh, yeah, and I weigh heavily more with Jason's side. I won't. Jason pretty much made all the arguments I would possibly make. It's here's the thing: seeing, seeing taking this player from what he, his from his accuracy in college and growing that to the level where it has to be in the NFL, I think is just a stretch. He still has the tools and the ceiling to be a first round quarterback, but I'm with Jason. If if my team spent extra to move up and get him or took him in the top five when these other quarterbacks are available, I would be pretty bummed out. Including, there, including Rosen? Including Rosen. There are six quarterbacks in this draft, including Mason Rudolph, six that I think all could be – now, obviously, they, they won't all be uh, hits, but I, I think all of these guys could be quality starters. So th to say that I'm down on Josh Allen, he's my fifth-ranked quarterback – I am down on him compared to people that want to say he's you a don't top want him five at number one. Pick. Yeah, no. no. All right, let's move on. Tight ends. We're going to focus on tight ends with difficult to pronounce last names. <laughs> let's just start with Dallas Goddard and uh, Mike Gasicki. 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 Jason, I assume based on the San Diego State. <laughs> Oh, sorry. South Dakota State. Sorry. So yeah. South Dakota State. Who's your favorite tight end, guys? Dallas Goddard. Uh, Dallas we, Goddard. We already said favorite. that we basically don't think a tight end is going to go in the first round of this, this year's yeah. draft. So. My, my guy at the tight end position for fantasy purposes is Dallas Goddard. Past two years, unbelievable production. Yes, he was at South Dakota State, but big and athletic. And I love the fact that he has two years of over 1,000 receiving yards, being a primary weapon in a passing game that's what I want to see everyone freaked out last year for OJ Howard because he was an athletic monster played in big time school and the problem is OJ Howard is a very complete football player I want an incomplete tight end I want a guy who's just physically uh, you physical, want Evan Ingram who yes. can't block I want a yeah, physical were... mismatch who looks very comfortable running routes and catching the ball that's why I like Dallas Goddard is my number one uh, far and away. People freaked out that Ingram went ahead of a player like Njoku last year, too. And we well, saw. The, no, it, did he? Yeah, yeah I'm he trying did. to remember. Yeah, we did. did. We, I, we were, oh, yes, one. yes. We yes, were kind of yes. like, oh, why didn't the Giants take him? Well, you, you took a guy that went out and actually did the rare thing and yeah. have a massive fantasy impact as a rookie at the tight end position. But this year, you look at players that may, you may not see one go in the first round at all. And then you have to weigh in the fact that. Tight ends don't contribute very much as a rookie. I don't think we're seeing a ton of fantasy upside from the tight end class this year in year one. Correct. Right. I, Fair? I agree. This is this is a slightly down year for tight end. Maybe it's just because we're coming off of last yeah, year's I think amazing that's completely year, it. And this it's, is just normal. Um, but yeah, Goddard is is easily my number one. And it's it's for a lot of the reasons you said. He projects to be a pass catching tight end. And his competition was poor production was great but his hands were good you saw some plays where the pass was terrible and he'd just you know jump up there with a six five frame and grab that ball with one hand and reel it in it was impressive so I, I like Goddard I think he'll translate yeah when, when watching film you have to watch a game see how the, it flows out see how they produce every time so this is not how you scout a player but if you don't know who Dallas Goddard is go check out his highlight video because there are some manimal things happening in that video. <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, did you guys want to weigh in at all about uh, Gesicki or Her oh, yeah. Hurst, oh, yeah. Hurst or Andrews? You got to weigh uh, in on Gesicki because he, like Saquon, bro uh, Saquon Barkley, he pretty much broke the broke combine. Broke the combine. Unbelievable. I think a lot of people in the fantasy community, especially the, the stat head portion, moved Gesicki up to the number one tight end after that combine because he was – Basically, like hundredth percentile across the board, the best athlete that the combine seen at the tight end position, just was unbelievable. And you know, when you watch the film, there's some good stuff there. Uh, he, he can catch the ball. He was used a lot as a pass catcher. Um, 
you know, but his, you know, he had 679 yards two years ago, 563 yards. Uh, I think that he is going to be used um, differently than the way I want my fantasy guys used. And I, because of how they he, he was used in college, he was lined up all over the place, but not in a good way. He was in the backfield a lot. He was used in, in ways that college tight ends are used that you don't really see in the NFL. So I think he will have more of a transition time that we're used to seeing from tight ends. Okay. All right. Well, uh, guys, you didn't get to open the show with it, so are your pipes prepared for the uh, – Are you thinking of Hayden Hurst running the ball? No, no, no. I'm not saying he ran the ball. Oh, I'm saying okay. he, he lined up in the backfield as a blocker, right. something you just don't see – too often. You got the pipes ready? I mean, the, I do. The requisite draft day song is, is approaching. Is oh, what? then. Oh, I'm just getting oh, you ready. Oh, here we go. Okay. That harmony was tight. It was. Oh, that wasn't bad. It was tight. That's, that's year three, right? That's year three. It's a toy. Just wait till next year. All right. What's on? What's on the? Um, what's, what's on the table? What's so on the table here? What we, are we betting? I mean, because we're gonna go through these big names, the ones we talked about. By the way, if you want the running backs and the wide receivers, we didn't forget them. They're on the Tuesday show. Just go back. Just go back and listen. You need to be listening to our show straight up into the NFL draft. That's one of the the rules. I think we gotta. You gotta roll with the lunch bet when when something uh, the stakes are this huge. You go lunch bet for the NFL, like full on lunch bet. Yeah, anything you you're eating, what the other two are ordering. Yes, we're gonna go with that. Uh, but for the winner, I would say we eggplant is that's been done. That's old bust. So uh, be original. Yeah, you All know, right. don't go with, with floppy I'm gonna, nasty. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get you when eggplant. I win. I'm gonna make you eat raisin canes, Mike, because you're on a super diet where you, you know. No, that's not. He's gonna be just fine with that yeah, punishment. I know. No, that was, oh darn! I broke my diet to be happy for an hour. There was uh, there was a game show back in the day on VH1. You guys remember VH1? Oh yeah. <laughs> but they had a they had a game show like that where they brought in a bunch of uh, professional models, <laughs> and there was there was when you got the question wrong, they forced you to eat Twinkies and stuff. So the, these people are just so mad. I'm gonna when we, when we go, because it's so delicious. I'm gonna get you only coleslaw. Don't and you have Mike, to watch I'll us. Are there any foods you're? Are you? Do you have like a shellfish allergy or anything like that that we need to know about? Uh, so that we can get you that food. <laughs> yes. Ha <laughs> <laughs> You die. Yes. Just bring the epipen though. We'll go. Okay. Yeah. I, m Jason, they make epipens for a reason. That's true. The pranks. The pranks. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's start at the quarterback position. We're going to predict uh, homes for five of them. Sam Darnold. Jason, you've got him going to? I've got him going number one to the Browns. I think they would be idiots if they don't take him. And granted, that might happen from Mike, history. Mike. I'm, I'm with Jason. The 101 this year is Sam Darnold. Were you, were you shocked that I went with my pick here? No. no. I wasn't shocked at all with uh, nothing. Cause that's the, the best part of this year's NFL draft. Anything could happen. Nothing will shock uh, me. Actually, to, to I haven't or said everything. it yet. No, Should you I haven't, say it or you haven't no? said it yet, but this did shock me. I, I wasn't shocked with who you assume have going one on one, but to drop here, wow, I was surprised. Sam Darnold to the Broncos. <sighs> and the only way that this happens is if the other two pieces of my puzzle happen, uh, which is Josh Allen goes number one and then the Jets three. the you Jets have, side with Baker. You have three pieces and then Cleveland doesn't trade out of the four. Yes. That is correct. And uh, that is the that is my prediction. If Darnold drops the two, well, saying, I think the Giants take Darnold. Uh that is possible. But Josh Rosen, let's go with the predictions there. Uh I have the Dolphins. Yeah, I I was shocked because that was when I was I made my final mock draft today and I have the Dolphins trading up to grab Darnold. And when I came in to put that in, I thought, no way would anyone else have that and you had it. But we both have him going to the Donald uh, to the Dolphins. I've got him at six, and I have got Josh Rosen going to the Arizona Cardinals. I All think, right, I think he will Please. fall to that, you know, that eight nine range, seven eight nine, and make then, Andy love you. And then it's going to be 
a battle between Buffalo and Arizona who can move up. Baker Mayfield, Jason and I, we both have him going to the Jets at number three. I think uh, I think that the Cardinals want him. I don't think they'll be able to get him if he goes at, at number three. Mike, you've got the Broncos yeah. grabbing him at five, yeah, and I, that's where I think someone might trade up and steal him away from the Broncos. But Certainly. Uh, I'm just going with the – this is really a contrarian thing because all for – Probably a good solid month now. Every report has the Jets lock it in. The 103, if he's there, is Baker Mayfield. So I'm just leaning the way of, well, uh, maybe maybe he doesn't yeah. actually go there. Yeah, that's how you can um, either be forced to eat eggplant or make us eat it. you got to have a strong, bold take. Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. Josh Allen, I got him going to the Browns. I think they're going to take the big arm. I think they're going to let at, him sit. At four or one? At one. And they're going to let him sit behind Tyrod. And they will. They'll let him sit the whole year. That's what I think. I have him going to the Bills in a trade-up. And I have the Jets are going to grab a quarterback. And I think Josh Allen, that's what the smoke screen oh, okay. might end up yeah. being of, of Baker Mayfield. And they pull the trigger on Josh Allen. All right, Lamar Jackson. I have the Patriots using those two late first-round picks to move up and grab Lamar Jackson. The Patriots find their next quarterback that makes sense I, th yeah. I think that could easily happen I've got him going to Baltimore it's not Baltimore bad. staying put you have the team that drafted Tyrod they they like this right. kind of style of player um and you know uh, Ozzie Newsom wants to probably leave him with a future intact which is not Joe Flacco of course and I have the Dolphins uh, I it's funny that we're all in agreement here that we th which we, teams we think are the Dolphins will They've been so They're quiet, grab but a they need a quarterback. Yeah, not stay committed to Ryan Tannehill. Grab the, grab the next face. Bro and Brooks is nodding. Mark. He agrees. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, just the quiet, they're just the quiet team sitting back there. Yeah, Tannehill. That's all you need to say. All right, running backs will predict for – I'm going to throw one in there. But Saquon Barkley, we all have him going to the Giants. Yeah, Dave Gettleman. Boring. Dave Gettleman as the general manager already – we have a track record. You have it as early as last year, taking Christian McCaffrey as, what, number seven Would you, based overall. on how McCaffrey turned out, would you say he succeeded or failed with that pick? I uh, would say. It, I, I would have to say at that high of a draft capital, I, feel like I would failed. feel like he failed, even though McCaffrey's a good player. I agree with everything you just said. Darius Geis. Jason? I've got him going to Seattle. I think he fits their scheme. You know, get them their Marshawn Lynch back. Hmm. There is only one. Well, yeah. no, I, so I, agree, no. I agree with that. Only but, one yeah. Highlander. Uh, Mike? I'm going with Philly. Yeah, I think they're going to take one. They're yeah, definitely going to take I one. I agree. They're going to take a running back. They, uh, they, if he gets I to Philly, I'll be shocked if he's not picked. I think there's some uh, trader's remorse for grabbing Jay Ajayi from, for Philadelphia, which is made up for here with Darius Geis. Sony Michelle. Let's throw him in there. You guys have to come up with a destination for Sony Michelle. Um Mostly because I want to hit this. I believe you've met my fitness consigliere, <laughs> Michelle. No, because we don't have tight end predictions because we all uh. thought they weren't going in the first round. So, Sony Michelle, I just want to know where you think he's going. Okay. I'm going to throw out Arizona. Oh. Arizona. What? Oh. Late. Later. So. I'm going to go not first round. Oh, yeah. That's what I thought it was going to be is will Michelle go in the first no, round? I think we all agree he's not going to go in the first. I'm going to go Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, Sony Michel, and he will lock in at least the oh, 103, Sigliere. lowest as the 103 in rookie. That makes sense. If that does happen, you know, I wasn't that high on, on Michel, but that would be a great landing spot. I'm going hold with on, the – Hold on, hold on. Hypothetical. Mm -hmm. Darius Geis ends up in Seattle. It would be Geis over Sony, Michel. You would still go Geis? Uh, yes. Someone needs to go Chubb Michel if Michel drops. Um, mm. I think uh, the Detroit Lions would be a good spot for Michel Amir Abdullah. Oh, did I forget to throw that in there? I never answered my Darius guys, and mm. it was the Lions. Ah. Yeah, you guys both said yours. So I have the Lions. I agree with you. They need one. Mike, who was your pick for Michelle? Tampa Bay. All right, Mike's got Tampa. I just got to work this into the docs so we can keep track. All right, wide receivers to close it out. Calvin Ridley, where do you guys have him going? We I yeah, Jason or uh, Andy and I match here, and I had no idea. I, I thought second round. I thought they get that's they get that, Ridley in the second yeah, round. That's where I'm leaning as well. Yeah. So Where's, we both have the Colts. Okay. Colts are wide receiver needy, and I think Calvin Ridley will be there for them. 
And the Panthers are wide receiver needy, and I think that they could take him there in the first. All right. DJ Moore. Cowboys. It, it, what the heck? We both have Cowboys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you both All right. do. It surprised me how far he fell in my mock, but at the end of the first round where I had Christian Kirk going to the Patriots, DJ Moore is still on the board, and I think they would take DJ Moore. So Patriots. Cortland Sutton. Cowboys. Panthers. And because I talked about it at the beginning of the show, I'm going. I'm speaking it into the universe. I'm using Oprah's secret, making it happen. The Green Bay Packers will select Cortland Sutton. Make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, now go watch a draft. I don't want to stare at you in a Kirk Cousins jersey all year. I just want you to know that. And then you better hope we trade up for Baker Mayfield. <laughs> what if we trade up for Josh Rosen? Uh, yes. I'm still going to wear the purple oh, for a while. Oh, come on. <laughs> the, here's, the, here's the thing. Even if they trade up for Rosen or Baker, it's Sam Bradford's the quarterback this year. You know what's fun? What's fun? Our post-draft shows. Oh! Once this draft takes place tonight, which, by the way, enjoy yourself. Eat some food. Oh, have some fun. Treat yourself. And for goodness sake, somebody else invite Brooks. <laughs> Just somebody get him to your party. Brooks, there's a bunch of cool parties going on. Did you hear about them? No. All the listeners are open invites. We'll send you a list. We'll send you, <laughs> did you sing that? We'll send you a list. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, next week we're going to get into the post-draft shows, which are they really matter. They're the fantasy, exciting, relevant ones. Our rookie rankings will be in the ultimate draft kit. Have fun. Jason's going to be having fun. He'll, 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 no voice for Jason oh, yeah. after tonight. He'll be hooting and hollering. The draft is going to affect best ball drafts. Draft.com slash ballers. Get in there. Woo. Goodbye. See ya. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.